Welcome to What's the 4 on 1, your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cox. I'm Onika McLean. And today you guys are in for a treat because it is our 100th episode. Can you believe that? Yes. Hey. Wow, yes. <laughs> it is. Yes. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. And we are bringing you an amazing interview with an inspirational Angelo Ellerby. He is the president and CEO of Double Exposure Media Relations and the author of the new book, Ask Angelo. And it's only fitting that we have Angelo because Angelo is responsible for quite a number of guests that we've had here on What's the 411. And wait, Angelo is so amazing, right? Right, right. He's been in business for 47 years. That's a lot of 47 years. 47 years. And he yes. looks fabulous, darling. Yes, you're about to see. <laughs> <laughs> and Angelo has done so much, so we're just going to jump in right from the beginning to how he got his start in the industry and the interesting way that he has of developing his clients. Check it out. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. What do Alicia Keys, Dionne Warwick, and DMX all have in common? They've all been clients of today's guest, Angelo Ellerby. Mr. Ellerby is a PR guru and founder and CEO of Double Exposure Media Relations. He's just released his new book, Ask Angelo, and is about to serve us some tea on the entertainment industry. Welcome, Angelo. Welcome you? to us, the 401. Well, it is my pleasure to be here with you all, but before I start this conversation that we're about to have, let me just say bravo, bravo to you, to the team of professionals at What's the 411. I think you guys have served as an excellent vehicle to promote and educate those things that are community involved. Wow. And so I say bravo to you two as the hosts, and I say it to Ruth because I've known her for so many years. Thank you. So, thank bravo you. We appreciate it. Thank you so it much. It was so warm and fuzzy. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> okay, so you have been in business since 1972. That's a lot of years. In your time in the industry, what have you learned about what it takes to make a successful artist? What it makes to make a successful person is really better for me because I'm not just creating artists, I'm getting into that everyday person. That person who feels that maybe they can't move forward or don't understand the importance of upward mobility. They don't feel pretty, they don't feel good. Those are the things that I like working on. I like working on making people feel to feel complete wow. and making people feel important. My mother always, always taught me and she said to me when I was six years old, you're, gonna, you're great because you're my child, but I want you to be greater and then I want you to be the greatest. And so that's what I like to give him. I like giving that back to people and finding wherever that little hole of doubt is, I want to fill it with greatness and I want to fill it wow. with faith and I want to fill it with vigor. And I want people to walk away with claiming victory with no doubt. Wow, that's amazing. Can I be your client? Can you I absolutely like can. can. If you can afford his fee. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, right. Come on. Yeah, Come on. I'll industry. invoice you. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> wow. So yeah, as a you know PR guru, I'm sure you've had to clean up some messes. You've dealt with some, some clients with some personality. What's been your most memorable situation? Well, you know, I don't think, you know, everyone says, you know, you managed DMX for five years, you were his publicist, and there's a whole lot of dirt that you possibly is in this book. Mm -hmm. This book is not about gossip, and it's not about dirt. Mm -hmm. It's about guidance, it's about leadership, it's about motivating people. The reason that I use the names that's on this book because I write very much about situations that I learned by and that I can grow by and that others can grow by. I speak about DMX. Everyone always wants to go to the negative of DMX. Mm -hmm. But no one knows that this man gave $2.5 million for five years to churches around this country. Yeah. And the, the, each and yeah. every single year for the five years that I work with him, he did a fundraiser at the Mary Ellen Theater in Mount Vernon um, where he fed homeless, AIDS victims, people who didn't have. Yeah, yeah, you don't hear yeah. about that. We don't hear, don't about, hear about, that. about that. And mm -hmm. see, the problem that I have with these people that 
we want to look at as being challenged mm -hmm. as it was Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson and DMX. Oh, right. All of these mission. people are no longer here. But where were we when they were crying out saying, yeah. I need to be held, mm -hmm. I need to be hold, I need someone to talk to. That's what this book is about. It's That's about beautiful. inspiring people to the next level and believing in themselves. And yes, we all have those points in our lives where we almost want to just not exist. But that's what we're supposed to be as a community. Mm -hmm. Mama always told me that it was important. It doesn't, it takes a village mm -hmm. to raise a child. Right. It's taken villages mm -hmm. to raise me. And it's right. my job as a mentor to teach, to educate, to motivate, and stimulate the mind to growth and bigger and better things. That's what this is about. This oh. book is about guidance. Everyone that says to me, oh, would you come and do my show? Mm, yeah, I, but I, I think maybe you need to read the manuscript Yeah, read, read the book. Read <laughs> because if you think that I'm going to sit back, still in business, wanting to do 47 years, mm -hmm. and sit up and tell you the stories and the problems mm -hmm. of my clients, you're cuckoo for Coco. <laughs> you guys are kind of sworn to secrecy, yeah. right? The, the I, publicist, and you, you, you. Yeah. Sleep all the all the dirt under the rug, and you make it pretty, and you make it a That's nice a picture. Thing. You make that it is pretty. my job, mm -hmm. and my job is you ask a question about troubleshooting and damage control, mm -hmm. and truly, I've done a lot of damage control with the Michael Jackson situation, and it goes on to a lot of religious uh, uh, ministers. It goes on and on and on and on, but. I can't write no book about these people talking about their business <laughs> and try to stay in business. <laughs> yes. like, they really like, trust me. And why would you do that? And why would I do that? Because at the end of the day, like if, if anybody in, in PR, you are the name. I can't you do are that. the name. Won't, won't do you that. You can just say your name and they're like, oh, you know, oh, you do. Exactly. Oh, I can't yeah. Do that. Yeah. I, I think that it's like, for me, it's like, it's sacred. Right. It's once it's happened, it's gone away. Because it's a relationship. Mm -hmm. It's actually. a relationship. Right. It's not, you know, if you take the word friend and split it in the middle, you get that in. Mm -hmm. I don't have friends. I have relationships. Nice. Right. And they are valued to me. Right. And if they are valued to me, there's a value to them. Mm -hmm. They've trusted me to do my job mm -hmm. and to hold their secrecy. Right. So who would I be to sit up here and say, well, you know this when it... Mm -mm. Mm, that's okay. not. Okay. I'm not Wendy Williams. This is not hot topics. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is no not hot topics. topics. What so, gave you? Can I, mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. What gave you the inspiration to write this book? I'm gonna be very honest with you. And every time I go to talk about this, there's always like a tear that falls from my eye. I have been romantically in love with my mother for my whole entire life. Oedipus. Aww. And Aww. my mom has <laughs> been my inspiration. Nice. I lost my mom two years ago. And I remember when we were saying goodbye to her, I stood there over her and I said, you said that I was great and you saw me get greater. And now, Mom, for you, I'm going to be the greatest. I'm going to work harder and harder and harder so that you can see and feel the spirit of what you left inside of me. Nice. Wow. And the next day I came back from North Carolina and I thought about how could I pay tribute to my mother? Uh, this is a lady that I would get on the phone and tell all of my secrets to. This was a lady that accepted me and my life and my lifestyle, ill regardless to what. She loved me. And it was an unconditional love. It wasn't because of my money. It wasn't because of my notoriety. It wasn't because of the people that I worked with. It was because I was her child. And she took the time to understand me. And you have right. such a great right. spirit, like my mom. I feel this so. Is dedicated to my mom. Wow. I feel so full just Thank you. just being next to you Thank in you. your presence. Thank it's you very amazing. much. Amazing. God is good. God is good all the time. It's so sweet how Angelo was inspired to write the book by his mom. I really like that. Mm -hmm. And I also like how he developed his artists the same way his mom raised him. So he's like, you know what? Look at those places of doubt and filled out with greatness. I love that. And also DMX. I had no idea he was that charitable. No idea.
That's why we need shows like What's the 411? Because how would you know that DMX was so charitable? All we see exactly. in the news is, you know, his run-ins with the law, right? Exactly, exactly. So our next segment is Angelo showing us exactly how his mom helped him to navigate an industry that's not so friendly towards gay people. Keep it locked. The average tax takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. You've also been described as the Henry Higgins of hip-hop. So you turned a lot of raw talent into big stars. Mm -hmm. What was it like to be kind of on the forefront of the hip-hop movement? What was it like being in the it industry? Was, and, well, you know what? You, 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 we're going to deal with very touchy issues here. Mm. Hip hop is a very homophobic industry. Well, it was. Well, it still uh, is. Well, it still is. you know what? It still is. Was, it still, still is. is. It exists. You wouldn't even mm. be able to get in before. That's very true. Very now, true. Now there are there are there are artists. people who mm. are not comfortable in their own skin. Mm -hmm. And I think what has happened with me is that I grew up in the city of Newark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's oh. a tough place to grow up at. Mm -hmm. But I also grew up with tough love at being of my mother. And my mother, this is so funny. I remember when I was 19 years old, it was Thanksgiving Day, and I was about to give this young lady a ring to ask her to marry me. Because I had four sisters who were wonderful and very well known in the community, and I had two brothers. And I didn't want my life or lifestyle to go out and ruin their friendships and their relationships. So I was gonna be a part of them. So I was gonna ask this young lady, and if I said her name, mm. you all would know who it is. Winnie Houston? Mm. Ah! That's <laughs> 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 She said no. Um, <laughs> no. Um, and I was about to give the girl the ring, and my mother said, can I see you in the kitchen for a minute? And oh. I said, yeah. She said, I know damn well you're not about to give this girl no ring. Now, you, we all know what time it is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Mom? I was like, Mom, what are you talking about? She mm. said, where's that ring? She took the ring out of my hand. She said, now go in there and take that girl home. Wow. Now, mind knew, you, we had invitations printed. They were being mailed. A little bit. This was going to be a surprise to my mom. We already set the plan. What? And from that day to this day, you must understand mm -hmm. why I fight for people mm -hmm. the way I fight for people. Because there was an acceptance of, of me then. Mm -hmm. And there's an acceptance of me now. So when a hip hop person would come through my door, you know the first thing that I would say? Okay, so I don't know what you heard, but I'm gonna tell you this. This is who I am. Mm -hmm. And they would look at me like, so yo dog, why are you telling me that? I'm telling you that because I wanted to come out of my mouth into your ears. So you'll know what you're dealing with. Right. You have to first start with honesty. I'm not gonna live inside of no capsule because you believe my life is not correct. Mm, well, it's wow. correct for me. Right, right. Now, if you want to not be, you came here for a service. Mm -hmm. It's called Goods for Services, Services for Goods. No goods, no service. <laughs> you don't have right. my money, I don't care who you are. Right. There's a stop and a separating line. That's what I right. say when I'm dating. You don't got my money. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have my money, right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so, so to answer your question, mm -hmm. it's, it, 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 it was very difficult. Uh, initially, but I think you have to be romantically in love with who you are and know who you are wow. and stand on that. Right. Don't let anyone sway you. I'm not going to sway because I'm not being accepted. Mm -hmm. How do you do that though? How do you develop that? I'm like, telling you, you. I'm asking in Angelo, and 70s, how do you that was, do that, that in I'm the 60s? I'm trying to say yeah. to you is that I think it has a lot to do with your home training. Mm -hmm. And when you're accepted by your mother and your sisters and your brother, what the hell else matters? Uh -huh. And then they gave right. you love. They gave you everything that my mother did wasn't one dimensional. She gave us the same kind of love. I remember someone that I was working with, an entertainer. The mother and <laughs> this lady that I was working with, she came to my mother and her mother in law because they found out that the brother was gay. Mm -hmm. They came to my mother to find out how do you raise a gay child? Oh God! Like and my mother said, "My mother said, well, child, I never knew that that's what I would. I guess it would be the same way you raise any other child.' <laughs> <laughs> but, but the reality was, people thought it was just inhuman thing right. that you had to raise it another kind of way. And I think it has a lot to do with how you begin 
And if you begin separating your children, then they're going to always be separated. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think when you include everyone as one, exactly. that's the way they grow up. Right. So I never looked at me as being out of the norm. Mm -hmm. I'm Angelo. Right. And I'm, I'm, I am romantically in love with Angela. Yes. That's yeah. what mother taught me. Thank and you. no one should ever interrupt your romance with yourself. That is powerful. That is powerful. I know, right? We're like blown away right now. Oh, my God. Stop <laughs> feeling yourself up, Kizzy. <laughs> romantic love, romantic. Yes. Okay. All right. It's important. No, it is. I think God, it's that's it so important. amazing. Goodness. So, I mean, like, mm. wow. So Ooh. you basically asked answered my next question so i'm going to go on to the next one with the rise of social media it's kind of easier for artists to kind of you know relate to their fans and speak directly to their fans and all that but they can also get into trouble too you know with what? social media how has that changed your, your uh, it job? has not changed me at all i'm working with it mm -hmm. but i also asked the question to so many people do you want brewed coffee or do you want instant coffee Mm. Brewed coffee is something that takes time to percolate. Drip, instant, drip, drip. Yeah, instant coffee, you pour it in the cup and you can drink it. So you want to be a star, everybody's a star for 15 minutes. Right. So do you want to go and get on television, uh, get on your social media, show your behind, show your breasts, show your... Right. For what? What do you... Now, I use it to elevate people, right. to talk about what they're doing. Right. I look at things as though it is a beginning, a middle, and an end. Mm -hmm. And I like to show that on social media. This is the beginning of an artist that I'm starting with. These are the stages in which we're going through. This is where they're at now, and this is where they're going to be. Okay. I don't believe that I need, and, and, and I say to people, be very careful of social media. And I, I was yeah. speaking to a lady last week, and she was yeah. like, I have fans all over the world. I said, no, you have followers. Mm -hmm. People, Do you honestly really believe you have fans? Right, because uh, fans yeah. spend money. Fans, with, so <laughs> what, what, yeah, yeah. And what is your fans oh doing God. for right. you? Right. You have followers. You are an informational person, mm -hmm. like everybody else that's on social media. Mm -hmm. I happen to merge what is publicity mm -hmm. and social media to work for me. I okay. understand the demise of the music industry. I understand the demise of everything in America. But I have to be smart. I have young people who are around me that educate me about the digital world. Mm -hmm. They bring the digital side in, the social media person inside. And now what you have is the OG okay. talking to the Mm -hmm. Young G's mm -hmm. about how we're going to incorporate and make this company still exist after 46 years. And now you right. have a full artist. Now we have right. a full artist, artist development mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not a record development because so many years ago, mm -hmm. record companies used to think that uh, preparing an artist was like product management. Yeah. They thought it was, and then they would say artist development, and it was really artists it was like development of a record because mm -hmm. after the record was over it was over right. and there was no development to the actual artist to the actual artist mm -hmm. people must get to understand the greatness of Barry Gordy wow yeah people, yeah. yeah you do though people really have to understand the strengths of this man mm -hmm. let's talk about the 50s and the 60s where Lonesome our music down. was listened, we didn't listen. We couldn't listen to our music on a pop radio station. Mm -hmm. They called our music black people's music, beach music, and it played just on the beaches in our communities. We couldn't mm. put our black faces on our covers of our CDs. Yeah. Wow. We had to. They would illustrate you so you could not detect if you were black or not. They would also take your record and give it to someone white to duplicate the sound so they can get pop exposure. But Barry Gordy was st astute enough to mm. simply say, how can I win in this race? Right. Mm -hmm. I win by doing this. Mm -hmm. I'll do it the American way. In Rome, you do what the Romans do. In right. America, you do what America tells you to do. Right. And so he took modeling teachers, choreographers, diction and speech 
and began what was an artist development program, something that people who don't look like you and I was not afraid of. Right. They're not afraid of their American custom. Right. They don't know nothing about the black culture, okay. but they know about their culture. So when you start to speak like them and okay. sit yeah, like yeah, them yeah. and move like them, they're comfortable. You're right. comfortable. Mm -hmm. And the acceptance of what, what this Motown Records was. Now, right. the other side of that is no one knew that Barry, Barry Gordy was a civil rights person. Mm -hmm. People say, Ed, what are you talking about? You remember that. the mm -hmm. March on Washington mm -hmm. when there was a, a Dr. Martin Luther King? Mm -hmm. Do you know who funded these marches? Mm. Oh, it was right. Barry Gordy. Wow. Wow. And so wow. when we begin to understand mm -hmm. the contributions mm -hmm. in the history of our culture, we'll find, and particularly in the music industry, mm -hmm. that it is worth your while to research and to understand the greatness of us as a people. Angelo just gave us a major history lesson. Like I had no idea Barry Gordy helped finance the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. He is fierce. And so is Angelo Hante. <laughs> In our final segment, Angelo's gonna give us more details about his book, Ask Angelo, his uh, radio show, and how to live your life as a thank you. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. So when I read this book, mm -hmm. when I close the last, the, the, the back, uh, cover, what am I going to feel? I would hope that you walk away with a feeling of, I can do this too. Oh, nice. Nice. I can do this too. Really? Really? But what's this? Like... This is that I can be whatever I want to be. I can be great. I can be greater. I can be the greatest. Mm -hmm. I have the abilities okay. to do whatever I want to do. Because I go into, I built my company from the basement of my mother's basement in Newark, New Jersey. With a teen phone and an old table. That's what I built. No money. No, 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 no inkling of, as to where money was going to come from. But when you work from the heart and you allow your mind to develop a direction for you, you can do whatever you want yes. to do. Stop making excuses Indeed. for not exceeding in life. Those are excuses why you can't be great, why you can't do what you want to do. Oh, I got to have a job. I got to do. There's a sacrifice one has to make. Right. So we can get your book. Amazon.com. Yes. Amazon.com. Yes. You can also go to Double Exposure. That's DXXNYC.com. You can purchase it through there. I'm coming. And I need for you guys to really go into Amazon and give me some good reviews. Yes. Okay. okay. So okay. we can really sell this book. Of course. Yes. I'm proud of And they can yeah. also listen to you on the radio as well. Oh, yeah. yes. yes. Uh -huh. I do have a radio show that I premieres mean, on the 15th. You are yeah. so <laughs> inspiring. Come on, tell us about the radio show. The radio show is something that someone offered me two or three years ago. And I was like, uh, I am not going to sit up there. No, I can't do that. And I keep for it, saying to for it. people that my mother is my inspiration. Uh, I, I'm, I married Angelo Ellaby many years ago, so I made that sacrifice never to have the relationship with anyone but myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm married to me, and I'm going to be married to me for the rest of my, my life. I, I'm in love with me. Now, all this may sound self-centered, but this is what I have to do yes. in order to get it to the next level of mm -hmm. life. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, I can't make excuses because he's granted me life. Mm -hmm. And because he's granted me life, I should be great at this life that he's granted me because it's a gift. Mm -hmm. And anything that is a gift, you have to show your appreciation for it. Make your life a and thank you. And you have to you. make your life a thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. right. And, and so then you have a gift for communication. So I have. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to be. Yeah. My degree. speechless. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, my, my, my degree is in fashion design. Which it's, I can see. Uh, oh, thanks. I like that. But it's not, it's not into. It's not into communications at all. I, I looked up. James M. Tume, you remember Juicy Fruit? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I interned with M. Tume for five years. Mm -hmm. I was, my degree was in designs. His wife was into the designs. She used to come to my shows. 
And um, she asked me to do You, Me, and He. Remember this song? You, you me, me, and, and he. he. What we gonna do, do baby? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I, did I mean, I don't before. know if that, because yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm right. not old enough uh, to uh, Yeah, I know, I know. It's mm-hmm. the history. Sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I did the um, album cover for that CD, mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. I began to, the first motion picture that uh, Oprah Winfrey did was called The Native Son, which was a Richard Wright movie, mm-hmm. and James and Toomey did the soundtrack for it. That's when I got introduced into publicity. Wow. Yes, nice. By chance. And the radio show now. Oh, I'll keep that. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes, we want to hear all of it. The radio show is, again, it's dedicated to my mama. Uh, it is, my first interview is going to be a very interesting interview. Mm-hmm. I'm interviewing myself. Really? Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, wow. Um, I pre-recorded the questions very much to where I think people really want to know. Because how are you going to tune in and what are you tuning into? It's not like I'm sitting on your your living room table every night. So right. I want people to know who I am. Right. You're introducing so yourself, basically. I'm going to introduce myself and I've pre-recorded the questions and I'm going to interview myself. I love myself. it. I love oh, it, though. Genius, I love it. The second interview <laughs> is called It's a Family Affair. Uh-huh. And I'm interviewing the history of Dionne Warwick, the Houstons, the Elliots, and the legacy continues. I want to show people how someone from Newark, as it is, Dion and Whitney and Sissy and her granddaughter now singing, her son's producers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, yeah. one of the, uh, David wrote uh, for Luther Vandross two or three of his songs that was Grammy songs. And I just want people to see the tradition that still exists. And I'm going to deal with the ups and the downs, the ins and the outs of Korea. I think it's best done that way when you can see the apex and the below. Yes. Right. People can then evaluate to see what it's going to take for someone to win in this race. So those are my first two shows. Wow. So we can't wait. Wow. We can't wait. Oh my God. Thank you so Thank you. Yes. much. Thank you. Yes. So inspiring. Thank you. Thank you both. Amazon.com. Get Ask this Angelo. book, guys. Ask Angelo Ellerby. Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Well, that's going to do it for this special episode of What's the 4 and one your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I hope you enjoyed our interview with Angelo Ellerby. I know I did. Yes. And make yes. sure that you get a copy of Ask Angelo on Amazon. Make sure you pick up a couple copies for your friends and relatives, mm-hmm. too. Until next week, check out our website, www.whatstheforeandone.com. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 4 and one TV. Yes, and remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, and Twitter. Mm-hmm. Yes. You can be tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> Please check us out, and we just might mention you on the show. I'm Kizzy Cox, and on behalf of Anika McLean, thank you for watching What's the 4 and one and here's to another What's under? Yes. Who's got the 411? 411, they got the 411. Who's got the 411? We got the 411. What's the 411? The 411. What's the 411?